Hi, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about how to describe vowels in articulatory terms. There's no doubt that when we first start doing phonetics, the IPA vowel chart can look really intimidating. This is because the chart presents us with the challenge of learning a whole bunch of new symbols and descriptors that allow us to characterize what those symbols mean. So my goal here is to demystify the problem a little bit, and we'll do so by using American English vowels as our point of reference. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the basic articulatory features we need to describe vowel sounds. So the first place to start is with a simple observation. Specifically, when you are faced with a chart like this, try to keep in mind that that chart is really an abstraction that represents how the vocal tract is shaped when we make particular vowels. That is to say, where a vowel shows up in the chart is actually a reflection of how it's made in the mouth. So with this in mind, let's break things down so that we can understand the components that go into making vowels when we produce them. First and foremost, we need to understand that vowels are largely about how we position our tongue along two dimensions. One of these is the relative proximity of the tongue to the roof of the mouth. And the other is the relative advancement forward or retraction back of the tongue in the mouth. Sometimes it can be helpful to think about these two dimensions in terms of an abscissa. We can think of the proximity of the tongue to the roof of the mouth in terms of its movement along a y-axis. And we can conceive of its relative advancement or retraction as movement along an x-axis. So in the picture here, we've clearly got a tongue that is low and advanced. Okay, so this brings us to two key concepts or terms. First, the relative location on the x-axis is just a way of talking about the relative frontness or backness of the tongue inside the mouth. So we call this the frontness or backness of a vowel. Second, relative location on the y-axis is just a way of talking about the relative height of the tongue in the mouth. So we call this vowel height. So now let's go back to our English vowel chart. You might notice, in fact, that the vowel chart looks a little bit like a defective tic-tac-toe board composed of cells that are defined by rows and columns. The comparison to a tic-tac-toe board can actually help us remember how to use height and the frontness-backness dimension to describe vowels. We can break the vowel chart down into three rows on the tongue height axis, high, mid, and low. And we can break it down into three columns on the advancement axis, front, central, and back. Now it becomes actually fairly easy to locate our vowels in the appropriate cells of the chart, just in terms of their relative height and their relative advancement. So here, for example, we can see that the E vowel is high and front. Even if you only get the hang of the height and advancement features for each cell in the chart, it's useful to know that you've already made important progress towards the description of the vowels in the chart. Because it's true that A ah is a low back vowel and A ah is a mid front vowel. But unfortunately, we still have a little bit of work left to do. This is because our concepts of height and frontness and backness aren't enough to tell all of the vowels apart from one another. For example, if we look at the high front vowels, we see that there are two vowels in the same cell, the E vowel in words like cheap and the I vowel in words like my name, chip. So we need another descriptive term to distinguish these from one another. Specifically, we're going to characterize the difference between these kinds of vowels as a difference in vowel tenseness versus vowel laxness. If we return to our vowel chart, we can see that it provides us with a useful visualization of the tense vowel lax vowel distinction in English. As the chart makes clear, English has four tense vowels 
And these are shown as having more extreme tongue positions in their cells than their lax vowel counterparts. The four tense vowels are E, A, U, and O. Okay, two more points, and then we're finished. One of these is a final descriptive feature that we need for vowel sounds, and the other is a clarification having to do with the mid-central vowel schwa. Let's tackle the schwa clarification first. If we look at our vowel chart, we notice that there are actually two symbols in the cell representing the mid-central vowel. And both of these represent what we call schwa in English. So why the need for two different symbols? Well, the answer really has to do with questions about how English phonology works. But the short version of the story is that the upside down E symbol is schwa when it's unstressed, like the last vowel in sofa. And the upside down V is schwa when it's stressed, like the vowel in the word mud. But for our purposes here, I'm gonna keep it simple and we'll just refer to the upside down E symbol as our schwa. Okay, on to our last big point. We need one more descriptive feature for vowels. That's the feature round. Rounding simply refers to the fact that we round our lips when we make a vowel. English has four round vowels, like the vowel in the word moo. Okay, so let's put all the pieces back together. Here's our chart, and here are the 11 vowels of English with examples of words that are pronounced with each of these vowels. We have high, front, tense, unrounded E, as in meat. And we have high, front, lax, unrounded I, as in pit. We have our mid, front, tense, unrounded A vowel, as in day. And we have the mid, front, lax, unrounded E vowel, as in met. Our last front vowel is the low front lax unrounded a, ah, as in cat. The low back lax unrounded vowel is a, ah, as in father. The mid back lax rounded vowel is a, ah, as in law. The mid back tense rounded vowel is o, oh, as in code. The high back lax round vowel is u, uh, as in the word book. And the high back tense round vowel is oo, as in boot. Finally, the mid central lax unrounded vowel is schwa, like the word putt. So now you all have the magical power to describe individual vowels by breaking them down into their features, into their descriptive parts. And you've got the power to group them into classes based on their shared properties. Given what you know now, what vowel do you think she's singing here?